time today. Thank you very much, General thank you, Barr. Thank you. Senator Hirano. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Barr, now the American people know that you are no different from Rudy Giuliani or Kellyanne Conway or any of the other people who sacrificed their once decent reputation for the grifter and liar who sits in the Oval Office. You once turned down a job offer from Donald Trump to represent him as his private attorney. At your confirmation hearing, you told Senator Feinstein that, quote, the job of attorney general is not the same as representing, end quote, the president. So you know the difference, but you've chosen to be the president's lawyer and side with him over the interests of the American people. To start with, you should never have been involved in supervising the Robert Mueller investigation. You wrote a 19-page unsolicited memo, which you admit was not based on any facts, attacking the premise of half of the investigation. And you also should have insisted that Deputy Attorney General Rob Rosenstein recuse himself. He wasn't just a witness to some of the president's obstructive behavior. We now know he was in frequent personal contact with the president, a subject of the investigation. You should have left it to career officials. Then, once the report was delivered by the special counsel, you delayed its release for more than two weeks. You let the president's personal lawyers look at it before you even deigned to let Congress or the public see it. During the time you substituted your own political judgment for the special counsel's, counsel's legal conclusions in a four-page letter to Congress. And now we know, thanks to a free press, that Mr. Mueller wrote your letter objecting to your so-called summary. When you called Mueller to discuss his letter, the reports are that he thought your summary was giving the press, Congress, and the public a misleading impression of his work. He asked you to release the report summaries to correct the misimpression you created, but you refused. When you finally did decide to release the report over a congressional recess and on the eve of two major religious holidays, you called a press conference to once again try to clear Donald Trump before anyone had a chance to read the special counsel's report and come to their own conclusions. But when we read the report, we knew Robert Mueller's concerns were valid and that your version of events was false. You used every advantage of your office to create the impression that the president was cleared of misconduct. You selectively quoted fragments from the special counsel's report, taking some of the most important statements out of context and ignoring the rest. You put the power and authority of the Office of the Attorney General and the Department of Justice behind a public relations effort to help Donald Trump protect himself. Finally, you lied to Congress. You told Representative Charlie Chris that you didn't know what objections Mueller's team might have to your March 24th so-called summary. You told Senator Chris Van Hollen that you didn't know if Bob Mueller supported your conclusions, but you knew you lied. And now we know. A lot of respected nonpartisan legal experts and elected officials were surprised by your efforts to protect the president. But I wasn't surprised. You did exactly what I thought you'd do. It's why I voted against your confirmation. I expected you would try to protect the president, and indeed you did. In 1989, this isn't uh, something you hadn't done before. In 1989, when you refused to show Congress an OLC opinion that led to the arrest of Manuel Noriega. In 1992, when you recommended pardons for the subjects of the Iran-Contra scandal. And last year, when you wrote the 19-page memo telling Donald Trump as president can't be guilty of, of obstruction of justice and then didn't recuse yourself from the matter. From the beginning, you were addressing an audience of one, that person being Donald Trump. That's why, before the bombshell news of yesterday evening, 11 of my Senate colleagues and I called on the Department of Justice Inspector General and Office of Professional Responsibility to investigate the way you have handled the Mueller report. I wanted them to determine whether your actions had complied with the department's policies and practices and whether you have demonstrated sufficient impartiality to continue to oversee the 14 other criminal matters that the special counsel referred to in other parts, to other parts of the Department of Justice. But now, we know more about your deep involvement in trying to cover up for Donald Trump. Being Attorney General of the United States is a sacred trust. You have betrayed that trust. America deserves better. 
you should resign. I have some questions for you. Is the White House exerting any influence on your decision whether to allow Special Counsel Mueller to testify in Congress and when? No. Now, you've been clear today that you don't think that any of the 10 episodes of possible obstruction that the special counsel outlined is a crime. I disagree. But you seem to think that if it's not a crime, then there's no problem. Nothing to see here, nothing to worry about. So with apologies to Adam Schiff, do you think all of the things that President Trump did are okay? Are they what the President of the United States should be doing? For example, do you think it's okay for a President to fire an FBI director to stop him from investigating links between his campaign and Russia? It may not be a crime, but do you think it's okay? Well, I, I think the report is clear that... that no, I'm not talking about the report well, and well, its I, analysis of whether evidence. a crime occurred. I'm asking you. I don't this think is not a crime, reports. but do you think it's okay for the President to do what he did, to fire the special counsel I do think it's to okay keep them from investigating. To do what he did, and I don't think the evidence supports the proposition. So I guess you think it it's okay to stop the investigation. Do you think it's okay for a president to ask his White House counsel to lie? Um, well, I, I'm willing to talk about what's criminal. What no, but we've already acknowledged that you think it was not a crime. I'm just asking whether you think it's okay. Even if it's not a crime, do you think it's okay for the president to ask his White House counsel to lie? Uh, which Look, event? if you're just going to go back to whether no, or not it's a crime, you you're telling about? me that which it's okay. Let me ask you about? the last question that I have in 17 seconds. Do you think it's okay for a president to offer pardons to people who don't testify against him to threaten the family of someone who does. Is that okay? Uh, what, when did he offer a, a pardon to somebody? I think you know what I'm talking about. Country. Please. What do you mean, please, please, Mr. Attorney General, you know, give us some credit for knowing what the hell is going on around here with you. Not really. To this line of questioning. So, no, no, we're gonna, listen, you've slandered this man. Yeah, what Every I sort of want to know is how do we get, how do we get to this point? Yeah, I do so, not think so that how I'm do we get to the point anyone? Where the, you know, all, all I, I can say, Mr. Chairman, I, I am done. Thank you very and much. And you slandered this man from top to bottom. So if you want more of this, you're not going to get it. If you want to ask him questions, you can't. Certainly have your.